Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video we're going to be painting a uh, Varg skier from uh, the Cursed City box. I have no idea if that's pronounced right, uh, but it's kind of like a vampire werewolf uh, monster. You can see it's already been primed and I've used uh, Ultimate Primer. Um, I think it's uh, Badger Primer in the US. Uh, it, it gives uh, like a really nice finish, but it's slightly uh, satin. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, it, it gets the job done anyway. Um, I'm starting with some um, Warpstone Glow. And uh, just one thing to be uh, aware of is that uh, Warpstone Glow has awful coverage. <laughs> um, so I'm using an airbrush to start with. Uh, and I'm just thinning it down with some uh, Vallejo airbrush thinner and a bit of water. And then I'll run it through my airbrush with a... 0.4 millimeter needle. Um, if you don't have an airbrush, you can get away with dry brushing this onto the model. Uh, but as I said, the Warpstone Glow has to, it has pretty awful coverage, so uh, it, you know you get a better effect if you use an airbrush because it will just um, get a smoother, quicker finish on there. Uh, whereas you know the, the uh, dry brushing method, it will work, but you have to do multiple layers, and you need the paint to be very thin. Uh, if you try dry brushing it. Um, with a slightly thicker paint you're going to get quite a big texture build up. Uh, so here you can see I'm going to go for the underlit uh, kind of look for the for this model. Um, you can already see the uh, the poor coverage really as I start to apply it. Now obviously having black as a base colour um, is not ideal for a very strong vibrant uh, finish so that's definitely going to require a couple of coats from the airbrush as well. Um, but the point being is because this is like an OSL effect, uh, you really need to work from a, a black base so that you can get that high contrast look. If you do this over a white base coat, it's just not gonna, it's not gonna work. Uh, the green will pop out really strongly over the white base coat, but you won't have any uh, dark around it to make it look like it's glowing. Um, when you're doing this, um, it's best to hold the model slightly upside down, um, but just be aware when you're doing it. Uh, that you need to tilt the model forward again and check all the angles because it's very easy to go to uh, paint from too extreme an angle on the underside and it'll look really really green when you look at it from that angle but when you actually are playing with it on the tabletop um, when you see so you view it from either side on or like a top-down perspective um, you probably won't be able to see any of the green so make sure that you get the angle enough that you can actually see some of the green glow on the model when you would actually be looking at it on the, the gaming table. So you could see there that the vast difference between when you hold the model up normally like this or, and then when you tilt it backwards. Then I'm going to add some uh, Uriel Yellow as well. Uh, this just, well one, it will increase the contrast uh, between uh, the uh, the black and the yellow, so it's you know, the tonal contrast. Um, you know, it pushes it that little bit further, but also it's adding kind of like a like a sickly kind of look to the, the glow, whereas the, the Warpstone Glow already has like a small amount of yellow in it, um, but the the added yellow just really punches up that kind of uh, undead feel. Um, you know, it's quite a common look, I think, for, for horror to have that, you know, green glow on things anyway, so, um, you know, it's, it's quite a fitting atmosphere for the model. Uh, for anyone wondering, uh, my airbrush is uh, an Infinity uh, CR Plus. Um, you don't need a an airbrush like that. Like, you know, like that's fairly expensive. You don't need anything like that. Um, you know, for this kind of work, you know, it's very very simple airbrushing. So, um, you know, if you just got something that's more basic, um, it'll still do the the same thing. So now I'm using some uh, Sotec Green, uh, doing exactly the same process as we just did with the uh, Warpstone Glow. Um, and it's again uh, uh, sprayed on at an angle. So I, I want the, uh, the light coming in from, well, if you look at the model straight on, it'll be from a top left perspective, um, but coming on slightly from behind. So there you can see, I think quite clearly, uh, 
one thing to be careful of is to try and leave a slight darkness in between where the green would meet the uh, the blue um, because they're both quite light colours uh, so if they start to overlap then the high contrast vanishes uh, and it, you know the the glow effect will be lessened. Um, I am going to um, add more to the model later on which will uh, will fix a lot of those problems if you do find that you've gone a little bit too close to them um, so don't worry too much about it. Um, the next stage here that I'm doing is adding some Baroth blue again same again but this time I'm just reducing the area that the uh, the spray is hitting uh, and again really focusing on well from the back here on the right hand side but it, uh, again it's really important that you rotate the model around to make sure that the lighting is working from multiple angles uh, because otherwise you're going to get something that looks like partially green from one side and then partially blue from another and then there's no uh, kind of like um, overlap between the two um, so here you can see what I'm talking about there's like little spots of green that are in areas that are basically surrounded by the blue uh, so it just it looks more effective but you will notice that it looks kind of like not super interesting at this stage like the glows are all there but there's no detail or anything uh, one of the first things to do that we're going to do to fix that is to add some skeleton horde contrast color and just completely wash it all over the model um, and it, we're basically flooding it as well so don't be afraid to you know get a big brush load it up completely and just wash it all over the model now one thing you'll notice is that it looks horrible and shiny at this stage um, it has gone into all the recesses and things very nicely so now you picked out the detail again but it's completely killed a lot of the glow uh, that's going to be fixed with um, you know hand painting later on uh, here you can see I just gave the model a quick coat of Ultramat Varnish. So I used um, uh, Lucky Varnish by uh, MIG, uh, MIG Ammo. Um, it completely killed the shine and you can see how it kind of brought back some of the, the detail because you're not getting that effect, that shiny effect that's sort of um, washing out everything on the model. And actually at this stage now that you've got the detail brought back in with uh, that wash, I think it's actually almost, you know, it's pretty cool to be able to play it that with the model at this stage. Uh, if, so if you just wanted something very quick and simple with a, an OSL glow effect, uh, I actually think, you know, it looks fine at, from uh, from here. Uh, so anything further than this is just kind of pushing the, the details more um, and making, um, you know, just adding a little bit more to the model to make it stand out and be a, a bit more special. Um, one thing that I did skip in the video but you can see on the screen is that all the teeth and the claws are all painted black um, it'll just make it a bit easier to make them shiny and stand out uh, with paint effects later on um, so now it's basically going to be a long process of uh, picking out details on the model so you can see the paintbrush that I'm using uh, it's fairly small so it's a 00, zero artist opus um, but you know any fine detail brush will do uh, it doesn't even have to be that small as long as it has a good point on it um, so I'm going back with um, Baroth Blue uh, Baroth Blue also like the Warpstone Glow has very poor coverage uh, but that's you know it's quite a nice feature because it allows you to do multiple layers and as the layers build up you get kind of like a transition effect as you reduce the size of each layer that goes on top so the the most opaque part say if you put like four layers down the first layer is really large and then the second layer is smaller and smaller and smaller until the, the fourth layer the fourth layer should be pretty opaque by then because you've got four layers of paint but as you spread out further away um, the translucency of the paint allows some of the darker color from the, the primer or whatever to show through underneath so you actually end up with a transition just using one color of paint um, but the main thing here is we're going to be adding texture to the whole model uh, with painted effects now it is going to take a while um, but the I mean the thing is that the model's quite large um, and heavily textured already there's not a lot you can do to get away with this you can I suppose dry brush it um, and that would have a, a pretty good effect but the thing is it gives a very uh, sort of homogeneous look to all the details whereas if you do it by hand uh, you get a more control 
um, for exactly where you want the highlights to be. So what you're going to find is that on a few spots, particularly on the head and on this front arm uh, and on the, the knee as well, that I uh, can spend a little bit more time on those because they're more sort of focal points on the model. Um, and then, you know, not worry so much quite about other parts on the model that are more in the background. Um, apologies, it's slightly out of focus here, but I think you get the idea anyway. Um, but the main thing that I want you to really take into account when I'm going to be doing this painting uh, for, you know, all the skin, because basically it is all the same. I mean, there's some fur and there's some skin and that's it. Um, and even then you're going to see that they sort of will blend together. Um, but the main thing I want you to take from it is that you don't have to blend all of your painting together. You don't need these perfectly smooth finishes to get a, a nice looking result. You can get very uh, sort of rough, scratchy marks all over and they will all blend together and give like a nice textured finish that will work just as well as a smooth blend. Um, just as long as you're kind of careful with the placement. And the really nice thing about that is it's much quicker. Like if you need to have a perfectly smooth uh, transition that's you know really cleanly painted, it can take a long time to do something like that. Whereas if you just you know paint a few scratches all over, you know all these scratchy rough marks all over a model, uh, you cover the same area much more quickly, and you don't have to worry about that really smooth finish. So here we're going to be doing a nice little thing where we're going to blend in the fur into the arm. Uh, one thing that sometimes bugs me a bit on the uh, fur on models is because of the scale the fur tends to be exaggerated in the, with the sculpting so it's very uh, distinct each little clump is very distinct uh, which you know you don't fur doesn't really look like that it's much smoother and more wavy um, and so what happens is the fur you know just there's a patch of fur and that sticks out really far whereas it should sort of softly blend in Whereas you're going to find here um, on this forearm section, if you, when you, you paint the marks on, if you start painting the marks before the fur, um, just ignore, you know, I'm just painting the hand and bit at the moment. Um, we'll get to the, the forearm in a moment. Uh, but when, when I uh, start painting on, on the fur, all of the marks will go in the same direction, blending in with the fur. If you just look at the hand, I'm kind of like doing the same thing. Um, what you have to look for is sort of the direction of the flow of the sculpting. So there'll be all these little creases uh, and, you know, just kind of like small little details all over the model. If you use the paintbrush um, to kind of make the, the marks flow in the direction of the sculpting, um, it, you're basically just adding additional details uh, that look like creases and things on the flesh right so they're not paintbrush marks you're just increasing the sculpted detail with you know a flat surface texture um but uh, i will like i said the uh the baroth blue it does have pretty poor coverage um so at this stage like I, I took quite a long time, I feel really, just to do some very uh, kind of insignificant work almost. Now I'm going up to the the pale grey blue uh, by Vallejo. This is way more opaque. You uh, you can see straight away it's making very strong marks on the model. If you want to be a bit quicker with your uh, brushwork, you can go straight to using this. But just be aware, in some of the darker parts on the model, it's going to be a massive contrast jump. Uh, and it will stand out too much. So in those cases, you you do want to definitely use the, the Baroth Blue first. Um, but, you know, if you want to do like a quicker process uh, and not worry too much about having a, a transition at all, then, um, you know, skip the Baroth Blue, just go straight to the, the Pale Grey Blue. Uh, if you don't have Pale Grey Blue, because I am aware that Vallejo have you know, you can't find these colours necessarily that easily uh, as I've found myself when uh, trying to replace my colours. Um, you can use uh, Blue Horror by Games Workshop. It's not quite as opaque, but it's not far off. It'll do the job. Um, and if anything, uh, Blue Horror is a little bit more blue as well. So you're still getting that kind of uh, sort of moonlighty kind of colour to it.
So when doing all these marks as well, uh, it is quite important that you don't overload the brush. Uh, every mark that you make, you want to be like a, a considered mark. If you, what happens quite often is people will put paint on the brush and they will just take the paint straight from the palette that they're using and apply it to the model. If you do that, the paint is going to blob, there's going to be too much paint applied, you don't have complete control over it. Now if you need to get a lot of paint onto a model, that's fine, so if you want to do like a large area, you just load up the brush, slap the paint on and then spread it around, but you probably want the paint to be quite thin if you're doing that, because if it starts drying when you've added a large amount of paint, you're going to get a horrible sort of texture blob there. Um, you can see there on the knee how high contrast that is in comparison to the arm, um, even though I've used exactly the same colours. Now we're going to look more on blending the uh, the fur into the uh, the forearm like I was talking about earlier. Um, so you can see on the, the forearm I'd already got the, the markings uh, heading towards the fur, but now we're going to carry that on in exactly the same way. So all these marks, they want to be roughly going in the same direction. They don't have to be perfectly parallel to each other. This isn't like... Um, super precise painting you can you know, sort of very roughly paint them on and it's not a case of picking out each strand of fur so you know as i said it, you don't have to be precise or too careful about this you're just looking to paint in the direction of the fur so if you go into a recess or a crevice uh, you know in between each section of fur it doesn't matter as long as all the marks are going like in roughly the same direction it'll just look like there's more fur you're actually making it look more fluffy if you like uh, and you know so and you can see there how the um, the fur has now kind of blended into the forearm. It's made it look like the, the forearm is slightly furry and then it gets more furry as it goes along and that's purely down to the sculpting. Then obviously you go up to the, the pale grey blue again. Um, and you know, just be a little bit more careful with this. Uh, and if you do too much um, painting like like if you do too many layers it, the paint will all kind of like flow together and basically you've just blocked in a whole color uh, so you do want to still have the texture effect visible but I think now you can see like how much brighter it is uh, after spending a little bit of time on the knee and the uh, the arm uh, in comparison to the rest of the uh, the model now um, so really what you've seen now is what you have to do to the, the whole area of the model that's been sprayed blue to, to begin with. Um, but like, having said that, uh, really you don't need to spend as much time on the rest of the model. It's just a case of uh, the, the arm here and the, like, what's going to be the head, I'll spend a bit of time on that as well um, to really stand out. But the rest of the model is going to be kind of have the same treatment but not as much time taken on on it uh, it's really just not worth doing it i mean unless you're doing something up to uh, display standard then really you want to be focusing on the focal points on the model to give them a bit of interest those, those are the parts that everyone looks at uh, i've mentioned this in a previous video as well but no one really cares about the feet or you know things like that and i mean don't like not paint them definitely give them some attention but um, if there's parts on a model that are kind of, they don't stick out very much or, you know, they're not something that's interesting, then it's really not worth spending a lot of time on them. So now I'm just going to paint the face, uh, whereas, it, so as opposed to the previous statement that I made with the parts that don't stand out, uh, the face obviously is a major focal point on the model, so it is worth spending that little bit longer on the face. Uh, But again, remember, this is for gaming. It's a gaming piece, so um, don't get too precious with it. Just get the main parts down. Try and get some high contrast and some transition. Uh, remember, the light is coming in from the top left, so always paint uh, towards the highlight points in a you know an up left kind of position. It's not a case of just filling in the whole face the airbrushing and then filling in the uh, all the recesses and things with the skeleton horde that has done all of the work for you for the light positioning pretty much now you may need to just block in a little bit of 
um, over the top of some of the skeleton hoard uh, where it's perhaps pulled and dried and you know in a larger area than you want it to so you can see here on the forehead where the ears connect just above the uh, the eyebrows there's quite a dark pool there so I probably will um, go over that a bit because that's a, an upwards facing um, recess so the light would naturally actually fall into that uh, and it shouldn't be quite as dark as that um, but apart from things like that uh, you know all the the, uh, the airbrush and the uh, recess work with the skeleton horde has given you a pretty good guide for where to place a lot of these highlights and as you can see none of the marks I'm making are particularly uh, neat um, you know I'm, as I said I'm not worrying about making sure that things are very smooth or clean or anything in fact because it, it's a very sort of furry kind of textured model I don't actually think necessarily that having uh, smooth painting necessarily adds anything to it so you know all these kind of scratchy marks and things are just accentuating what, what's already there on the model I'm sure a few people will probably notice that so I mentioned I'm using a size zero zero brush a few people will be like oh you don't need to use such a small brush for this uh, that's exactly right you don't need to use a small brush I just end up you know preferring that kind of thing uh, I do find sometimes that having a a large brush or a brush with, with a uh, large belly on it what happens is that I will catch parts of the model with it the sides that I don't necessarily want to uh, well, I'm just focusing on you know painting with the tip obviously but um, and also having the slightly uh, larger brush with the large belly kind of blocks your view a, a bit more as well um, so this is for me um, it just makes my life a little bit easier I, I don't necessarily see the benefit of uh, um, having the large brush okay you get the uh, you can add more paint with the, the well of the brush so you can keep painting for longer but there is a limit to that because the paint will dry out on the brush regardless um, and I've been painting so long though now that it's kind of like a, you know a, just a muscle memory response to keep adding more paint from the uh, the palette anyway um, so in regards to this sort of texture effect painting is especially then having a, a small brush for me um, is that the correct way to go but if you find that you can do the same effect or you know you prefer uh, using a larger brush then that's also fine um, that's not to say that I only use a small brush I definitely use a larger brush for different things I mean you, you saw earlier on when I washed the whole model with the, the skeleton hoard that I used uh, a larger brush then because it would be uh, ridiculous if you're going to cover a whole model quickly to uh, use a tiny detail brush um, but for other things as well like uh, you know covering large smooth areas uh, a larger brush will make more sense if you want to blend something um, smoothly or on, uh, with a few strokes and a larger brush gets the job done as well uh, and not just larger brushes you know different types of brushes where you got uh, newer brushes and older brushes where um, newer brushes have very sharp tips and older brushes have uh, very rounded ends you get different marks um, you can blend them differently all sorts of things like that so um, you know don't feel like that you always have to use your newest brush for everything or um, there's only you know you only need one brush or well, some people can paint everything with one brush as well uh, you know but don't feel that you have to limit yourself to anything in terms of brush use so now we're going to work on the the fur a little bit um, like his mane I guess it is it's so I'm going to be dry brushing on him um, but it's very um, precise dry brush it's of course slightly out of focus at the moment it'll come back in a second um, so you can see uh, I'm using a small artist opus dry brush um, but the, the main thing to take from this is the, uh, the movement that I'm doing so I'm brushing in the direction of the first this is very much the same as when I painted the forearm using just the fine detail brush and it was kind of dragging the uh, the brush in the same direction as the fur um, this will allow some of the bristles to go in between 
the strands of the fur. So you can see uh, it's picked up some of the details, some of the raised edges, but it's also gone a little bit into some of the recesses. Um, if you wanted, you could just paint it the same way as I did the forearm, but it's a large textured area. There's really no reason to spend a long time doing something like that. I mean, okay, if you're doing it for a golden demon or whatever, you know, go ahead and spend a long time making sure each brush mark's perfect, but in this case, it's really not worth it, and you'll get a, a nice finish doing it like this as well. You will notice that I'm using the paint that's on the wet palette, so it's slightly watered down. So uh, a few people asked about this. The paints on, that I use on the wet palette, um, I apply the paint, then I add a few drops of water so I can get to around about 50-50 water to paint. Now each paint is slightly different, uh, so I can't give specific mi uh, mixtures, but um, you know, it does allow me to kind of modify each paint as I put it on the wet palette. So when I'm doing the uh, dry brushing, um, it is a very wet paint. It's not straight from the pot in this case, uh, which means that when you apply the, the brush, um, you don't get kind of like that, such a heavy texture buildup. Um, you know, it just the, kind of like the paint flows a little bit more off of the brush. Um, Sometimes you want the drier effect, sometimes not. In this case, I don't want such a dry finish to it. You can see there on the wet palette, so I've got two more colours. That's um, Heavy Grey by Vallejo, and uh, it's, the other one is Heavy Grey mixed with uh, Baroth Blue. Um, you can see I'm using them. Uh, the reason I, I did that is because the sort of colours are similar to the mix. After, you know, so obviously I uh, airbrushed Baroth Blue onto the model. Uh, and then I gave it the coat of Skeleton Horde. Uh, so that gives it kind of like that greeny, browny, olivey kind of look to some of the recesses. So I wanted some of that color option uh, for blending in any of the, uh, you know, these muscle highlights. Uh, ultimately though, I decided it wasn't worth it. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to spend the time doing it or not. I, like I started doing it and then I thought I'm going to just spend a long time painting all these details on to make anything smooth and uh, again this is just for gaming I don't you know I don't want to spend all all my time painting something like this for uh, that is just going to be for gaming um, and that might get knocked about and things like that so uh, my advice would be uh, don't worry about it I mean it's not the end of the world you know it's just mixing up an extra paint uh, so you can blend in in some of the darker areas by the way if anyone's thinking oh some of the paint looks a little bit rough here that's just down to the you know the, the gruffy kind of texture marks that I'm making and the translucency of the paint. The paint's not thick at all, it's, you know, it's really thin uh, layers. So if you wanted, you can just add more and more layers at this stage and you'll get a very smooth finish afterwards. So again, uh, with the marks that I'm making, uh, I think you can see actually the translucency of the paint here. Um, be aware, obviously, with the blue colors, so there's uh, quite a lot of white in these blues um and white being uh, a paint with uh, a lot of uh, let's say the pigment in white is like very large so that's kind of uh, one of the reasons why when you're painting something white you find quite often it gets a bit chalky or uh, more heavily textured uh, more quickly than other colors so you know um even with a translucent color it's, you'll get <laughs> kind of like little these little spots of white and things like that in the uh, uh, when you're painting that if you're using a dark color um, that you just don't get things like that in the same way because the, the pigment colors uh, the pigment particles are smaller uh, but you know it, it's just something that you you know kind of live with if you wanted like if you kept going using multiple layers of very uh, thin paint eventually it become quite opaque and you wouldn't get any of these marks um, but if you, you know every time you're using a lighter color so any color if it's a light color it's probably got white in it then you probably will need to use uh, multiple thin coats to get the nice finish uh, whereas if it's a darker color then you can probably get away with uh, you know a slightly thicker uh, mark when you make it But again, so as I was going to say, uh, with these marks I'm making, uh, look for the detail on the model and just do all the marks to follow the set, the detail, the way it's sculpted on. So on the kind of like this sort of, um, I guess that's the ankle kind of area. Um, there's a, quite a few horizontal lines sculpted in, where, which I guess would be sort of uh, veins or tendons or just creases in the, the muscle or whatever. But 
um, if you just paint more of them um, to fill in the blank areas, it looks like there's just more detail sculpted on. So now you can see the feet, um, I mean the feet, but the, uh, it is kind of important for the lighting to uh, make sure everything matches up still. So the light is still coming from the top left. It, there's really no reason to spend a lot of time on the feet, but they are, uh, so as I mentioned, you know, people aren't going to look at them too closely. Um, but they do obviously need to match as I said, the, the lighting for the rest of the model. And because they, the feet will be slightly darker, so when I did the airbrushing, uh, I made the the highlights stronger on the arm and the head and you know shoulder, like the top part of the model, and there was less on the lower part. Um, so just be a little bit careful when you start adding the, the highlights on the bottom. It's nice having the high contrast, so the basically it looks like the detail's more raised. Um, so just... Um, don't do as much painting basically do thicker lines and then you can do multiple layers uh, so as i said because of the opacity of the paint uh, it's very translucent so as you do more layers the highlight points um, become brighter with the uh, the extra layers So now it just looks like he has a very creased kind of foot, uh, but you can't really see it too much from the front, front but obviously you rotate the model around. Um, so one of the biggest irritations with this kind of painting is, so you have the glow from one side, the light from the other, and then the rest of the model's sort of unpainted. Um, and then it's just a case of, well, I'll cover it uh, towards the end of the video, but it's just a case of, you know, filling in that detail with a sort of a mid-tone kind of look. Um, here on this side of the model, uh, uh, it's a little bit irritating. What happened was when I airbrushed it, you could see quite clearly that the elbow and the uh, the, the bum cheek um, caught the uh, the light, uh, you know, reasonably well. But after the uh, skeleton horde was applied on it, um, it dulled it down. Um, it didn't stand out as much. So I've got to go back and pick these out a little bit more. Um, but again, this is purely because I'm painting these highlight details on. If you'd stopped at the very early stage where it was a case of airbrush it, wash it with skeleton horde and then give it a coat of matte varnish, uh, it would be fine because these highlights, like the, the highlights on the leg, lower legs and things wouldn't uh, be so clearly darker compared to the head. But because of you know, the head and shoulders in the area where I've spent all this extra time painting it now, these look really light so the areas that haven't been painted will obviously be much darker. So if you are going to do this, you do have to you know, make some effort to paint all the areas on the model, um, just because you're pushing the, uh, the contrast so much higher on the highlighted areas. Um, so now where the, the teeth were uh, painted black, um, we're now going to paint on some very, very quick and simple highlights, um, just to make them look like they're, they're a bit shiny. Uh, so I'm not actually using white. Um, I know it looks quite light on the, the wet palette, but it is uh, pale grey blue. Um, so now we're going to go to the uh, the green glow. Um, we will. I will be going back to you know painting the the rest of the uh, you know the other side of the model, so you get to see the whole thing. Um, but obviously, you don't want to watch the whole video of me just painting all the uh, the blue details onto. Uh, onto the model because it's just the same thing over and over basically. But for the green glow, um, I mean it, in, it is kind of the same thing again, uh, but slightly in reverse because obviously it's being, the light is coming from underneath. So whereas on the left hand side of the face all the highlights are coming from the, the top left, all the highlights on the right hand side of the face are coming from the bottom right. So don't paint any of the upwards facing sections of the face. It's, this is probably the trickiest part of the painting 
Now, hopefully, the because of the airbrushing, you should have a guide there. Um, oh, just for reference, the the three so there's only three paints. So ignore the one on the bottom right. Uh, so there is obviously Warpstone Glow in the top left. Then I've got Moot Green in the top right, and in the bottom left is Uriel Yellow. So those are the only three colours you need uh, for painting the green. And it, really, the Warpstone Glow is only there just in case you need to, um, you know tweak anything or uh, knock back any of the highlights that you place on there but um, you know just really try and concentrate to not paint any of the upper right facing uh, surfaces for you know the, the right hand side of the face and indeed any of the other parts of the model now it's, it's a bit easier on the other parts that are glowing green because that they are all underneath the model anyway um, what you might find is that it's easy to paint the model upside down in this case so you turn it upside down, all of the raised areas again are the parts that you pick out. However, if you do decide to paint the model upside down, stop every now and then and turn it the right way around and have a look. Um, just to double check that you're, you're catching parts of the model that you'll be able to see. Because, uh, so as I mentioned with the airbrushing, what can happen is you, if you pil uh, paint it um, too far upside down, um, and then when you turn it the right way up, you can't see any of the work you've done because it's facing downwards. You need to get the edges close enough to, uh, so that when you look at it straight on, you can still see these highlights. Um, also on the right hand side of the face, if you paint in the, uh, the lower side of the eye using uh, moot green and then a bit of uh, Uriel yellow, you'll get a nice little uh, underlit glow on that, that side of the eye. Um, obviously you have to paint the eyeball black first but the nice thing about this is you don't have to spend any time painting in any pupils or anything like that nothing too fancy and the effect is still there uh, also um, one thing that you might find is uh, because certain parts of the model haven't had any uh, light catch them when you did the airbrush guide um, it, it might be worth just picking out a few parts using both the, the Warpstone Glow and the Moot Green. Um, like the ears there, uh, they pretty much have been left unpainted at this stage. So, you know, just pick out a few parts on them um, just so that there's, a, you know, there's something on the model in those areas. It, it just looks a bit better than uh, having basically unpainted black parts on there. So again, the face is the most important part of the model, so it is worth spending you know, just a little bit extra, of extra time on there. Um, and again, always keeping in mind that you're trying to paint the underside of the right-hand side and the top left uh, for you know, the, the left-hand side of the face. So here you can see I've been working a little bit more on the uh, the green side, um, picking out some of the details. Uh, it's exactly the same process as I was saying for as for the the light side. Um, I'm just going to show you a little bit of a few of the areas. Uh, so we've got the these, I guess they're little wings on his shoulders. I'm not entirely sure. Um, he like I say he's a bit of a kind of a cross between and sort of a a werewolf and a vampire. Um, you know, don't message me saying that I've got the law wrong or whatever. I I, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I haven't read any of the the story for him. Um, it's just what he looks like to me. So, um, yeah. But it's just a case of using moot green. Um, again, looking for all the details. Look at how the model is sculpted. Remember to tilt the model backwards uh, because you are painting the undersides of highlights. You know, as I said, that's the trickiest part to get your head around. You're not painting the upper edges, you're painting the lower edges. It doesn't have to be super neat or anything, but just picking out details. Uh, this is, you know, it's one of the best things uh, about painting by hand is that it adds all these sort of expressive brush marks and things. Whereas if you just do everything with airbrush and then you don't paint any other t sort of texture marks on there, 
it kind of looks very clinical and dead you know everything is just sort of smoothly airbrushed and um there's, there's none of really yourself like your own sort of expressive marks pulled onto the model but of course it does get the job done a lot a lot quicker so if you just want to airbrush a whole army you know get it ready for tabletop then uh, you know that's fine as well um here i'm just going to put in some like a kind of a, a black fade to the top of the uh, the fur it's a little bit um weird this so what i've got is i've just got some uh, a bad and black I've turned it into a uh, glaze. So all that is is like uh, around about four parts water to one part paint. Um, and then just, you know, painted the top edge. You, you need like two or three coats. Uh, it will finish a little bit shiny um, just because a bad and black is a slight satin finish to it. Uh, but I will give the model a coat again of uh, ultramat varnish right at the end, um, you know, just to even all the layers out. Also, if you want, um, and you find that the black line is too dark because obviously there's still light hitting it you can do a very gentle dry brush over the top just so a few more bits of the fur are picked out so now for the, the final part of the model uh, what I'm going to do is paint in, paint in all of the basically unpainted sections um, so these are will be the areas that haven't had any airbrush work uh, put on them to start with um, and what I'm using is uh, basalt grey, which is a, a Vallejo colour, but you know, it's just a, like a slightly darker than neutral grey kind of colour. Um, you know, you can mix your own, just you know, mix black and white together. Uh, it, it doesn't matter too much. So the reason I'm using a grey colour is um, because it's not going to fight too much. It's not going to have the, the blue colours from the light. Uh, hitting the top left and it's not going to have the green obviously from the underlit glow uh, but all it's just doing is just adding detail to the uh, you know basically the, the unpainted parts of the model um, because otherwise it, it like you can leave it at that stage but I, I feel like it just looks a little bit uh, lazy to, to not have any paint on those parts so as I said don't spend too much time on it but um, you're just doing it. it's the same process again and you can see it there as well so you looked for the creases in the the elbow there and then all the paint marks kind of follow the crease line um, you've got the fur all the marks follow the, the direction of the fur that kind of thing I think ultimately it took me around uh, probably three three to four hours to paint the model um, I could have spent longer on it. Like, I mean, there is a fantastic amount of detail on this model. If you wanted to do something really special with it, you obviously could. Uh, but I'm trying to get all these done for for gaming. Like, I actually want to play Cursed City, so um, you know, I'm just doing things so that they look kind of good. But again, not um, nothing for that you would ever enter into a Golden Demon or anything like that. You can probably see every now and then, so my paintbrush changes, um, it, even though they're all the same size, so they're pretty much all zero zero uh, for the detail work, but I, I sw switch between old and new brushes sometimes, uh, just because there's, there's no real need um, to use a fine detail brush when I just want to get some rough, sketchy kind of textures on there. I wasn't entirely sure what the detail was on this side of the model. Um, it seems like the fur had vanished and there was um, I think I'm guessing it's some sort of scarring maybe um, so I, I'm just very quickly kind of picked a few areas out um, you know very very roughly uh, later on I do spend a little bit more time just I just go over them and uh, you know neaten them up a little bit um, just for my own peace of mind uh, it's probably one of my biggest faults when painting is I find it very hard to not spend um, more time on a model than I should. Um, but anyway, so you know, at this stage, you know, so there's a little time skip there. I've uh, finished painting the model pretty much, uh, and now I'm just going to do the base very, very quick and simply. So all it, I did was glue some sand to the base, uh, paint it black, leave it to dry. And now I'm using just moot green, so you don't even need to use the warp stone glow. 
uh, and I'm spraying the green from one side. So this would then, you know, it reflects the same uh, way that the, the body's catching the green light. So it's coming from the same direction. So it would be somewhere off off screen or whatever. Don't worry about getting the rim of the base. Um, when you paint a, the black rim at the end, that will make a, a huge difference to how neat it looks. It kind of like it will frame it all. Obviously now you need to do the uh, the blue light from the other side. So we're using Baroth Blue. Um, dry, again, same process. So dry brush in the direction of the light. Don't just rub the brush all over in every direction. You just want the brush going from left to right towards the model, basically. So what will happen is when you see uh, from this side, it'll look mainly uh, blue. And then when you see it from the other side, it'll look mainly green. So anyway, here's the model. So I've painted the rim black now, and you'll see what a difference that makes. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much uh, the end of the video. Um, it, it was quite an interesting model for me to paint. I, I was trying to paint it quickly. Uh, as I said, I did have to spend a little bit of time, uh, you know, tidying up a few areas. Um, here you can see for the green glow, the, the benefit of having the darker areas around there. It makes the green glow more effective, basically. And you can kind of see how I, you know, painted with the, the greys. Uh, so it's sort of like from this angle, this is probably like the worst angle, <laughs> but you know, it's from the back of the model. So um, again, uh, it depends how much time you want to spend on it. But then as it rotates around again, you can see the light then coming in from this direction and it starts to get more interesting again, uh, right up until, you know, it catches the face and then it's like, oh, you get like the, the nice little angle where it catches some of the green, some of the face, some of the arm. Um, and uh, you know there you go uh, but i think you know it, it works quite nicely overall um uh, you know i'm pretty happy with it i'm going to do like a few more of the, the cursed model uh, videos there's a nice little uh, fancy shot at the end where i got a green background for him as well um but yeah so there's going to be uh, a few more cursed model uh, cursed city sorry videos uh, to come anyway um but so as i said that's the end of the video uh, thank you very much for watching uh, please subscribe if you want to see more Cursed City uh, stuff or indeed any other things. So I'm going to be doing more Space Marines as well. They're obviously very popular. Um, and also I do have a Patreon. So if you uh, want to push your painting a little bit further, um, the Patreon focuses a bit more on kind of Golden Demon display level uh, painting with you know more complicated techniques and things like that. Uh, but as I said, anyway, that's the end of the video. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.